Under the authority of John Brennan, the CIA worked as a restriction inquire about outfit for the Hillary Clinton battle, as per reports. Spilled stories in the British press affirm that Brennan's illicit keeping an eye on Trump started around April 2016, straight after Trump's greatest essential triumphs. Spectator.org reports, as it turned out to be desperately obvious to Brennan that Trump would go head-to-head -head against Hillary, Brennan swung to knowledge accomplices in Europe for soil on Trump. Be that as it may, they didn't have any, spare some quite meager material on contacts between Trump crusade authorities and Russians. Whatever Brennan gathered was insubstantial to the point that Robert Mueller hasn't talked with him about it. Think about that for a moment. Mueller was apparently named to finish the counterintelligence test into Trump world, and he hasn't wanted to converse with its father. Brennan has endeavored to clarify this shocking error away by dubiously saying that whatever Mueller needs he could discover in CIA records. Those records are no uncertainty as curved as the formal report beginning the test. It creates the impression that Brennan's claim tips were excessively flaky and informal for the Obama organization to resolve to print. Brennan had his own factional hunches, powered by his hot scorn of Trump and maybe a couple of spitballing discussions with other Trump detesting spy boss abroad. The unique relationship had turned evil against Trump, as clear from Britain's sad part in this chaos. However, he had no proof to meet any sensible limit for a counterintelligence test of a presidential battle particularly one attempted by an organization supporting that hopeful's adversary. Brennan's undercover work against Trump was as bold as a distrustful LBJ wiretapping Nixon's battle plane in the thick of a race against LBJ's VP, Hubert Humphrey. In his own particular ungainly way, Brennan realized that he was treading on a political minefield. He alluded to the FBI-slash-CIA's keeping an eye on the Trump battle as an extraordinarily outstandingly delicate issue. That accommodating morsel originates from Russian Roulette, the book by David Korn and Michael Lizikov. Brennan faintly comprehended that there would be damnation to pay on the off chance that it turned out that Hillary partisans and the U.S. government were keeping an eye on her adversary's battle, influencing utilization of resistance to inquire about that she had acquired. Be that as it may, Brennan who was trying out to be Hillary's CIA chief and gagging on his outrage at the possibility of Trump as president, couldn't help himself obviously. From April 2016 to July 2016, as per spilled stories in the British press, he amassed a multi-organization task force that filled in as the beginnings of a counterintelligence test into the Trump crusade. Amid these months, he was specifically instructions Obama on Russian obstruction. Brennan's code word for keeping an eye on the Trump battle, and was for all intents and purposes stayed outdoors at the White House. So more than likely Obama thought about and had given his approval to Brennan's earth burrowing. The FBI's contact to Brennan was Peter Strzok, whose scorn for Trump squared with Brennan's. Yet, even Strzok realized that Brennan was blowing smoke about Trump-Russian intrigue. Strzok would later tell his special lady that he detected the test would demonstrate a vessel, that there's no enormous there. What's profitable about the court, Isikov account is that it unintentionally gives a photo of Brennan running in against Trump's spine task appropriate out of Langley. Indeed, even after the FBI test formally started in July 2016, Brennan was bringing CIA specialists, FBI authorities and NSA authorities into a similar room at CIA home office to pool there against Trump hunches. To give these crazy gatherings a patent of respectability, Brennan summoned the post-9-11 method of reasoning of interagency participation. Korn and Izikov, clearly steady of Brennan's activity, utilize a rationally purified dialect to portray these gatherings, however the stunning political import of them is as yet unmistakable. Brennan talked with FBI Director James Comey and Admiral Mike Rogers, the leader of the NSA, and requesting that they dispatch to the CIA their specialists to frame a working gathering at Langley that would audit the insight and make sense of the full extension and nature of their Russian activity. Brennan was considering the lessons of the 9-11 assault. Al-Qaeda had possessed the capacity to pull off that activity somewhat in light of the fact that U.S. knowledge organizations, a few of which had gathered bits of insight in regards to the plotters previously the assault, had not shared the material inside the insight group. 
Brennan needed a procedure in which NSA, FBI, and CIA specialists could uninhibitedly impart to each other the data every organization had on the Russian task, even the most touchy data that tended not to be scattered all through the full knowledge group. Brennan understood this was what he would later call an astoundingly, especially delicate issue. Here was a dynamic counterintelligence case, as of now started by the FBI, going for revealing unceasing Russian secretive action amidst a U.S. presidential crusade. What's more, it included diving into whether it included Americans in contact with Russia. So until race day, the working gathering at Langley was attempting to uncover soil on the Trump battle and wasn't concocting any. Be that as it may, Brennan didn't need his endeavors to go to squander, so he spilled to Senator Harry Reid the presence of the counterintelligence test into the Trump battle. He couldn't release any cursing discoveries from that test on the grounds that there weren't any. Be that as it may, he could cause political harm by inspiring Reid to tell the press obscurely of the test's presence. He additionally motivated Reid to compose an open letter to Comey about the test, which was intended to develop the FBI's dependence on Hillary's paid soil digger, Christopher Steele. Reid, as a solid Democratic hack in the tank for Hillary, obliged Brennan's plan. However he felt sufficiently controlled by Brennan that he griped to Korn and Isikoff about Brennan's odd power, a ulterior thought process that Reid detected in Brennan. The extent of that ulterior thought process included a few components, a crazy contempt of Trump, now in plain view in Brennan's unhinged tweets, a craving to proceed as CIA chief under Hillary, and an exceptional animus toward Michael Flynn, whose assurance to tear up Obama's reset with the Islamic world an issue precious to Brennan, sent him into humiliated wraths. Brennan, infamous for his Islamophilia, had declined to take his pledge as CIA chief on the Bible, viewing that training as the sickening relic of an once Christian America. He had assumed a main part in Obama's effort to the Islamic world and considered Flint to be a nefarious danger to that work. What Brennan's working gathering at Langley couldn't accomplish in nailing Flynn was expert later by Sally Yates and Comey through ensnarement and Mueller's utilized arraignment in which he got Flynn to admit to a wrongdoing he didn't confer. Numerous inquiries in the majority of this stay unanswered, however this much is clear, John Brennan's change of the CIA into a branch office of the Hillary crusade will go down as one of the grossest misuse in the office's history.